Hello and welcome to the overview video of the Wave Function Collab series. So in these videos, you will learn how to use these nodes in Houdini and how to make a dungeon generator like you could see here in Unreal. So with this tool, you could generate many levels as you want. You can also place automatically props like we have here, automatically place these crates and so on. We also have bridges with the chains and we also have automatically placed enemies. And this is also playable instantly as well. Now to show off the tool a bit more, we have here our main parameters. You can of course make as much parameters as you want. So, but in this case, I expose the rows and columns. So the, just the overall size on how big your level should be. Then I have a seed value or a random value for my layout. So where the player could walk around. Then I have also a value for the lava. So in this case, the lava has a pretty big space of my area, but we can play around with the seat to, for example, have it in a smaller space. And I also have one more slider here, and that is for randomizing the props placement. So let's show you some of these sliders. So let's say I would like to have a different layout. So I'm just gonna play around with this value and check out a new layout. So here is then my new layout that has been generated. So we have just a new look on this level. And again, if you're not happy with the look, we can just again slide it and wait for a new level to be built. Now we have a different result again. This one is maybe more interesting. And now let's also then change where the lava is. So let's increase this value. And now our layout has been changed. As you could see, we now have more walls going on instead of having these lava. So that can also be quite interesting to have. And you can also see that all pieces are nicely connected as well. That is also taken care of. Then I can go into playing around with the seed of the prop placement. So let's say I'm happy with the other sliders. I can just play around with this seed as well. And now we have different prop placement. In real, I've also set up automatically the navigation mesh. So if I would spawn enemies, they can automatically find their way to the player. Then also, let's say I want to have a bigger version of the level. So we can increase this from 15 to, for example, 25. And then we have a bigger level. And now I have a way bigger level, as you can see. I have a lot more rooms that stuff can be in. And it's quite a more interesting in general when I have a bigger level. So here in the real, what you see is everything is actually a prefab or a blueprint in this case. So we can still move things around. So for example, here, these are automatically placed. I can just click them and replace them because they are just blueprints. Now let's jump into Houdini and give you a quick overview there as well. Then in Houdini, we are going to start generating our basic layout. So this is our first wave collab function we will do to get our main layout. Then I will do a second the wave function collapse and this is then for a lava layout. So for example where the white part is there will be a pool of lava. Then I'm just transferring this information to each other. Then we will do some cleanup. We're also going to use the Wang decoding which is quite interesting and then I will show you more in a sec about this. And then next up is we're going to delete very small rooms that are not connected. So in this case, I have, for example, here, these two rooms, they are not really connected to our main playable area. So we're going to delete them. So we don't waste any models there. Then going back to that Wang information, we can actually have a small preview here on how my level should look. So these are also new notes in Houdini called the Wang notes. So they are tile and a decoder. So these are just the models. They're just a bunch of models. And then we can copy them on the points to get a quick preview of the level, which is super useful. Then further, we have this information that can be further used to, for example, fill out the rooms, place pillars, and so on. So from that information, what we could do here is we could extract all the rooms and we could do another wave function collapse in these rooms separately. So you, you see all these points now are another wave function collapse on another resolution to get more details in these rooms. 
So we would also call this a multi-resolution of wave function collapse. And this is very useful to do, to do more decoration in rooms. And then again, from these points, we're going to use some filters and then assign an instancing. So then each point has then its own reference or path to a certain model. So we can then place around what we would like to have in the room. So in the end of the network, what we will have is we will have some geometry. Like for example, here at the bottom, this is where my lava will go. So I use, just use a tiling texture on this. And you can see we have a lot of points, which is then used for instancing. As you can see, each of these points have a certain path assigned to this. Like I also mentioned in the beginning, we can also play this level. So we can simply press play and we can play this game. So we have built a very small game from this where we can just walk around and we have some enemies attacking you. And everything you see here is then procedurally being placed. We can always, of course, tweak this afterwards if you want to, if you want to have a specific layout. But having this procedural system already doing a lot of things for you is really helpful. And you can really experiment a lot in this phase with where things should go. So that was it for the overview video. Hope this was interesting and I hope you will be start watching the series soon.